Hello everybody, my name is Jack Dax, and welcome back to Let's Play Heavy Rain. In the last episode, uh, Sean Mars got kidnapped, and, uh, Norman Jaden basically, uh, came to the place where we'll be working, which is this very crummy, crappy office. Let's see what he has to say about this. No time to lose. Gotta get down to work. First, analyze the case files. Wow. Yep. Kind of not the cleanest place you could be, but it'll get the job done, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, push that desk. Push that desk, you strong man. Yeah. Move that desk. <clears throat> Let's get some work done. Mm. Oh, whoops. That's the wrong thing. <coughs> I know if I do the right things from time to time. <coughs> Step one. Change the office. Not a horrible thing to do. So let's see. The different environments we have are like an autumn sort of forest. A. I think this is an underwater one. One that takes place on the top of like a valley, sort of like in the sky. And this one takes place on Mars. Let's, uh, let's go to a place where, uh, no one can disturb me. Under the sea. Under the sea. This'll do. Uh, yeah, this'll do, be good for now. <coughs> let's look at the clues. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. Ari, comment. Tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. Maybe. And, uh... <clears throat> Man, I'm clearing my throat a lot. I guess I should explain exactly what we can do here. Um, basically, on sequences like this, we get to analyze clues that we've collected uh, from crime scenes and stuff like that, and sort of try and figure out who the killer is. Now we're just going through different clues here. The killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. You can tell that from the tire tracks. And another thing you can do is, uh, well, I'll show you that uh, here in a little bit. Hmm, a common species. That doesn't help much. Sorry about that. Uh, but something we can do with some clues is geoanalyze them to find, like, locations on a map. It's a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Which doesn't help at all. So let's look at the origami figure. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Not at all. But... Just one origami store in town. <clears throat> and that, uh, I guess that's it for the clues. Another thing we can look at are files, which really aren't that useful. Just stuff like the victims, um, and the MO. <clears throat> so let's view the victims. Eight victims in the last three years. 
All boys, age between 9 and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. So, uh, obviously the killer is pretty sick. Because he drowns his victims and... Actually kind of ironic considering I'm underwater. <clears throat> there is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. Interesting. Can we geoanalyze it? The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly <coughs> and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo profiling any easier. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found. Which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. <clears throat> Alright. So the files we really don't need to go through. But, uh... Nice to have, um... And, uh... whole plot element here. Is that the Ari actually makes your brain go funky and here we go again I gotta go wash my face and no one carries a drug around called tryptocaine which basically uh I need to take some basically eliminates the effects of the Ari it's alright I know I can make it I know I know I can make it so, um, for the purposes of this episode, I think I'm just going to take it. I don't think it'll actually do anything if you take it all the time or if you don't take it. Like, I did a playthrough where I did it every time I could, and I ended up living in the end. So... Moving onward. There's a receptionist. Doing her thing, whatever a receptionist do. There's a man on a cell phone and... It's Ethan! Yay! And this is uh, what I was talking about when I said we need to remember this details from the park. <clears throat> Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while. And then he wanted to go on the <clears throat> cell, so I put him on one of the wooden horses. And when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... And it was 4.15. 4.15. Yeah, that's it, 4.15. I remember exactly because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. He was wearing a... Beige coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. Green pants. Believe it or not, those are actually green pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I... I can't remember exactly. It all happened so fast. You say you took your son to the park after school. 
But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Yes. Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Hmm, that's comforting. <clears throat> I'm not feeling great. <laughs> and here's uh, Grace. Did they find something? No, nothing yet. But they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... Do they think it's the origami killer? It's still too early to say, but it is a possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. You goof! You done goofed! What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? See, she agrees with me. Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? You done goofed for pissing him off. Sorry. It's not what I meant to say. Of course it was. I miss him so much. Don't we all? Cry me a river. <laughs> and yes, I'm just putting down just you know, Ethan and Grace and Sean and just all of them making them even more and more depressed. Cause I'm just a horrible person. <laughs> Alright, see then. Got to remember. Thank you, Rooster Teeth. If I had not watched um, one of their trophy guides, I would have kept saying brown pants. Because they do look like brown pants, but they're actually green pants. What do we have here? We have a little convenience store. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa, I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you will please to move along, sir. You may know something that could help save other people's lives. I was unable to save the life of my own son. I do not see how I could save the lives of other people. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Seems a little more positive than the last guy. I just realized we're out of time, so, uh, see you guys in the next episode.